What's going on, guys? It is Walkthrough Thursday, the best day of the week. Holy crap. What? Are you dizzy? What? Are you dizzy? No, I was just thinking about how excited <laughs> Walkthrough Thursday is. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to the Croaking Crow podcast. I am Spencer Cardia. I am Mariah. Mariah? Mm -hmm. Any Mariah specifically? No, just I think. The name? Uh, yeah, like I think it just means Mary. Oh, a Mariah. Yeah, like. Is I'm that like, a thing? Oh, she was. She's such a Mariah. I thought there was a Pariah. Per, that's what I'm thinking of. What's that? Mar uh, I don't know. Somebody. I know Piranha. No. It pariah. Maybe you have a disease like oh. um, leprosy or something. It, it, it is a disease or like if you have a disease, you can't go around that person. They're a pariah. Yeah, I'm not sure, but I was Mariah. Mariah. It was a, it, it's a variant of Mary. Okay. I think it's Irish. Okay. It might not be, but who cares? I didn't say that. I'll tell you who doesn't care. Frank. Looking good. Looking always, always looking good. Um. How are you guys doing? It's a beautiful day in December, December 8th. Um, December 8th. Wait. Um, happy Advent. It's Advent. Oh, man. The first candle's lit. The candle of hope. The second candle's lit. No, the first candle's lit. What day is it? It's the 8th. Sunday. It's Starts in Saturday. November. Yeah, but isn't it every Sunday? Yeah. So we went through two Sundays already? Oh, yeah. We started this last week. Yeah. Oh, the, sec the second candle's lit, which yeah. is what? Peace? Love? Can't remember prosperity <laughs> um okay well second candle's lit um and we have two more candles to go but you know 25 days of christmas and all that it's a joyous time right um, Toki doki <clears throat> i have your advent for oh, you oh sweet advent gift i'll show the camera <clears throat> hello kitty lip balm forever 21 <laughs> i don't think it's lip balm is it, <laughs> it i is. mean it's lip balm but it's not like lipstick is it I I I don't I imagine there might be some sparkles in there. No, it's so. just for it's just for the winter slopes. Yeah, I, I think you know lip balm and ch like, I think chapstick. Like lip balm is sort of how do like, how do you say lip uh, balm? I, I think lip just balm can be used as a chapstick, but you can't really call yourself chapstick unless you have like active ingredients well, that fight the chap. Chapstick is just saying like saying Kleenex. Well, I, I know, but like I th there's yeah. tons of lip protectant yeah but i think when you think of chat like lip balm can you don't need to have chapped lips it's just like it's like a lip moisturizer no i know a lip balm could be like lipstick but is that lip balm or is it for the slopes what do you mean for the slopes when you keep saying that skiing when do you like, when do you put any kind of bomb on for the slopes what uh, uh you're gonna have chapped lips i'm guessing you weren't on the uh on the hills this year I yet have big caribbean lips <laughs> actually <laughs> No, I don't. I didn't mean it like, like weirdly, <laughs> but I don't think there's any getting getting away from that. I was gonna say like I don't really get chap lips a lot because I think. Um, do you need help? It's just, it's just, it's just. <laughs> Give me the pen. No, you Please? break my pen. All you gotta do is I it can won't break it. Oh my girl. No. Are you happy? If you need to do you that. Happy? I had to go to aggression. But to go back to my Caribbean lip saying, so I was saying you know because I've lips that were crafted in the caribbean <laughs> but that also doesn't make sense because then although maybe in normal times they wouldn't get chapped as much because they're not thin and dry but then also i i have a, <laughs> as someone who has thin and dry I know, lips i don't have dry I lips offense. but i do have thin lips and i'm mad that um people are allowed to make fun of them oh really yeah, I find that highly offensive. And everyone makes fun of thin lips and everybody wants to get lip filler. And I think if you, whatever size lips you have, you should be proud oh, of them. Oh, wow. It's like very smooth. Right. It, that's what I mean. That's like for the slopes. You just put that right in your pocket. Yeah. Now, is it taste or smell like anything? Yeah, it's flavored. Of what? Vanilla? Yeah. But it's like. Let me smell I'm it. I'm not a huge fan of it. Well, you shouldn't have put your lips all over. I could have given it to someone else. It looks like a little brown um, farmer's egg, you know, like a chicken. Oh, egg. yeah, the brown eggs. But yeah, back to my Caribbean lips. Um, it actually doesn't really make sense because that would also mean I, th I feel like my lips would be more so chapped like a Christmas toy. on the slopes because the climate in which they were meant for. What are you talking about? What do you mean? Like you, Anybody how, like, can get chapped lips in the... In the in the beach or no i know that 
and like anyone can get a sunburn. What I'm saying, like depending on your attributes, it's like how your body reacts to it. And so I don't. I think my lips will get more chapped than the slopes. So I'm saying. I'm saying that it's December eighth, and um, the reason my name was a variant of Mary is because it is the feast of the Annunciation. No. What is it? The feast of the Assumption. No. The un. un the Assumption is the end. That's when she's like. Oh, the the. It might be when when her birth is announced. Mary Day? We get Mary Mary Miss? No, it's not Mary Miss. Okay, so it goes in order, I think. Because we're getting close to Christmas. Is it is it the Annunciation? Well, no, would it probably No, that wouldn't make sense. You know what? I can look it up. Uh I didn't think I'd forget, but um um I got a lot on my mind. You got a lot on your mind. Yeah, your daughter's in England. My daughter's in England. How's she uh, liking it? They're loving it, um, her and Sierra. And um now you have to put another picture yeah. up because I just said it. Uh Sierra hates when he puts the pictures up of her. <laughs> Because she doesn't even know where you're getting them. She I, she thinks you're making them through AI because she's definitely not posing for them, and they're nothing that she remembers. I choose at random, so like, <sighs> I if she finds fault in one, like I didn't even notice that. Oh was, right, I'm serious. You are her biggest antagonist. December eighth is obviously the feast of the Immaculate Conception. Oh, because he'll be born by Christmas. So wait, which which what does conception mean? It means like he'll be born in nine months. Obviously, Christmas is not nine months. It's like in, yeah, but it's like I mean, in nine I mean, days, yeah, but it's Christmas like condensed. in general, yeah, it's sort of yeah. like a remembrance, not the actual, like, it shouldn't be taken so literally as like, right. this is the day. This, it's just a remembrance of the, the Bible, the Bible story, the Christmas story. Yeah, it starts, yeah. yeah, right, because we're, we are in Advent and we are yeah. saying what happened and we, and, and, and the conception is a huge part of the story because it's an immaculate conception where her husband is um jesus's earthly father but he's jesus is jesus, god so he's he, did, god. he didn't need anybody but um sierra i'll say her again because today is her anniversary for what her first back surgery her first back surgery yeah oh wow that's how she remembers it she had it done on um december the, 8th the immaculate conception right and so she, um, Avalon is in England and she's cel early celebrating her birthday, which is next week. And so today Sierra was able to, she usually celebrates it with her mom, but oh. uh, she, she, she was uh, out and about on the streets of Piccadilly Circus. <laughs> I think that's a place. Well, shout out um, her back. Piccadilly Circus. <laughs> shout out Piccadilly Circus and shout out the Immaculate Conception. Yeah. All of it. Um, yeah, shout out at all. So yeah, December eighth obviously is, is chuck block full. Yeah, of things. But uh, anywho, anything else new with you? Anything else new with me? No, um, no. It's actually warmer here in Pennsylvania than it is in England. Is that a? Is it always cold? I I feel like a, I'm not good at geography. Oh. <laughs> oh. But I feel like we're on like a level playing field of like horizontal line you know of, I mean? of England. Yeah, like, like we're not like north or south of like the equator more than them. So funny, funny, funny. You should say where are they located? They are. Um, they're across the pond, across the Atlantic Ocean from us on the east coast, and uh, and I found uh, she, Avalon told me today that the plane actually flew. So we're uh, in Philadelphia. And instead of just heading straight out into the ocean, which you can because Jersey's just like, you know, skip over that um, and start heading out there. They went all the way up to Canada. Uh, Canada? Yeah. Went all the way up to Canada and then made a right and then went straight across, which is so funny. That's the, the route that the Titanic took. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I wonder. Because it's just straight, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You don't want to be like <clears throat> maneuvering over the ocean. Autopilot. Do you know <clears throat> how long planes run in autopilot? Basically, all pilots do is take off and land. And even that, they barely do. Well, okay. That's like saying that when the anesthesiologist, once he's anesthetized you, he's just having a cup of coffee because he doesn't have to do anything again until he wakes you up. The anesthetist or anesthesiologist, I think an anesthesiologist. Highest paying job in the, in the country. Really? 
Yeah. It should more than more than medical doctors. Uh, R.I.P. Michael Jackson. Like oh, yeah, it's well, really for the, for the liability. Yeah, they, they also have the highest liability. Like they have, have the highest liability insurance. Well, I guess it's it's tempting to go into it as a medical practice because you're not really touching. And it's just the highest paid. I mean, if, if you're going for money, well, money for sure. But in reality, if you can get down the the formula right, and and you know what I'm saying, because you, you're not you're not a surgeon, you're not touching people, you're not delivering babies, you're not. Uh, you literally just put the mask on their face. Yeah, I. But I mean, I, needles. I hear it's very stressful because of that, right? So, even a, a surgeon doctor, mm-hmm. when they're called called to the to the the front lines, mm-hmm. ah, we have a m- medical emergency. <laughs> <laughs> someone, someone has their arm sawed off. Yeah. They you, you then do whatever you can to save the person. You reattach it, right? Yeah, the and right like, way, like not backwards. And you try, and hopefully, most of the time you succeed. Mm-hmm. Some of the times, I did everything I could. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. couldn't get them back. The stressful part of the anesthesiologist is it's all on you. There is no of this. Oh, I tried my best. No, I know. It, it, it's yeah. like it's perfection, and also there's no. A lot of doctors, like, you can sit, like, wag your hand. If I went to another doctor, maybe my, my yeah. friend would be alive. Anesthesiologist, it's not that gray area. It's They've wrong dosed you. And that's why they have to have the highest liability insurance. Because right. as soon as you die from, anesthesia, or from a wrong dose of anesthesia, there is no, you know, external factors. It's right. The anesthesiologist messed up. Right. And that's a lot for someone to take on as a job. Yeah. Yeah. So the anesthesiologist... Um, figures out how much you need. They give it to you. They watch you yeah, the whole time. The whole time. And then when the doctor's finished, also I think he 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 doesn't just wait for like all right. He 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 asks the doctor when will you be finishing? Because I want to come off this yeah, easily, right? Yeah. And then, but I mean, it, so you're you know that's the pilot. The pilot starts oh, absolutely, the plane, absolutely, watches the plane, absolutely. and then ends the plane. But um, and I mean this is this is commercial flights. Like obviously no pilot. Just jumps into that. You know, it's not like people drive automatic cars or people drive Teslas. And it's like you have to learn from a go-kart to a, to a manual transmission. Like right. The, the planes you see flying over uh, the beach with flags, they're manually driving the plane. It's like, right. So once you're at that level, yes. it's like you are an expert pilot. Right. You can and, even tell someone how to do it. And yeah, at any point, if the, the you know autopilot fails, you have the ability. Right. I'm just saying. Not there. You take it away from them. Sorry. But wait, I keep forgetting something I have to say. It comes out. It comes out. You get to cut this out. The, 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 oh, yeah. Okay. Ready. You mentioned a surgeon. Do you, uh, you know, what age surgeon do you want generally, you know, to operate on you? What age surgeon? Hmm. That's a tough question. Because every age has something good that I kind of like about them. Mm-hmm. The young, it's they have the, they went to school the most recent they're ready to prove something. They have that 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 bleeding heart of I can still save everyone. Yeah. The old, wise, steady hand, but also they've been weathered. They 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 they've seen so much death that what's what you just so much death. I don't think that's supposed to be happening. No, but I mean it's it's inevitable as a, as a, a lifelong surgeon. Okay. Oh, what, what do you think? Like just like a, what if you're a plastic surgeon? I guess. Oh. <laughs> I'm I'm sorry, like, ma'am. It's inevitable. I was thinking like, if, like a gun, like an a, a ER surgeon. Like, well, yeah, but I mean, what about a plastic surgeon? He, he, he should never be losing anyone. That's plastic not, the persons aren't even sick. All right, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, really, carry the one. I want early forties. Early forties. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm feeling a little nervous because I think I forgot the answer, but it's definitely not early forties. I know we're gonna end up. Okay. That was plastic surgeon. Huh? That was plastic surgeon, though. I'm talking about a plastic surgeon. That's okay. that's the TikTok that I saw. Um, it, it was a surgeon, and he said a lot of people ask him, and he said it's obviously inappropriate to even make the statement, but he's like, I'm telling you. His math was uh, the amount of time that generally somebody would graduate from medical school, and then they would start being a plastic surgeon, and the amount of surgeries they would do through their career, and then all the way out of their career he said there's a um the best time and now i can't remember i think it's mid 50s to, no it's going to be mid 50s it's going to be early 50 
late 40s to early 60s. He said before that, um, but when you first come out of, and not even just first come out of medical school and you're, um, what's that called? Like when you're a resident or whatever, you want your surgeon not to have like done a few. You want your surgeon to have practiced so long that he's probably not going to run into something that's going to surprise him. There's nothing he hasn't seen. There's nothing that I haven't seen. So this, oh yeah, I've seen that 13 times. I've seen that. So very, you want, you do want them experienced beyond school. You want them experienced on people. You don't want to be your surgeon's first anything. No. Um, but so then you're, you're doing good. And then he has all this experience and he, he can use it and da, da, da. But he said, unfortunately, um, he said, I think he might've said sixties was pushing it. I think he might've said late fifties, but there are some people that are good in there's, there's, there's some people good in their seventies, but that's uh, your eyes go and your hands go. Mm. And especially for surgeons, your neck goes, mm. um, he said, and like, he, yeah, he knows some people who've kept themselves super fit. Yeah. And they can go further. But generally, all that experience with someone with like a fatigued neck or, you know, hands or eyesight. Okay. Hand me the lacerator. You don't want it, which is sad. It's weird when you think of that. Like you get so much experience, you can't use it anymore, you know? Well, that's anything, really. Really? No, no I've seen people make pizza to the end of their days. But not the same. They can you imagine? <laughs> They can't twirl it. What is it? It's like they they did it all wrong because they couldn't see it. Yeah, but then like you become like an advisor. Like the old oldest man at the pizza shop. It's like he's watching generations after him. What? I think he makes pizza till he dies. Yeah, I guess so. I I watch. I told. I think I've said this before on here. Pasta Grannies, which is on um, YouTube. Yeah. The YouTube channel, and it's these women are in their hundreds, and they're still making all the pasta by hand. Yeah, I've never made. Have you ever made pasta by hand? No. No. Do you want to? No, I'd uh, have to make gluten free, pi- gluten free pasta at this point. I always see with the eggs and the flour, and then I, I'm like, oh, that looks cool, and then I think I would never want to do that. Well, that's why it's a dying thing. In it, this, the, that's why this woman started this channel, yeah. and it's also an Instagram account and a cookbook and everything. Because, n- yeah, of course, people don't want to make pasta by hand and do all these things. But these women who have been doing it since they were eight years old, and they're now 108, and they're trying to bring it back. No, it's just trying to document it before it goes away completely. Heard. Well, guys, it is Thursday. And, uh, you know, it's plastic surgery. Plastic surgery old, Thursday. Old grandmas. And the immaculate Young conception. people get plastic surgery. What? Young people get plastic surgery. I think only young people get plastic surgery. You said for plastic surgery for the old grandmas. Like, they're the ones doing it. Are you back to, like, what, all pilots are guys and all plastic surgeons are? Wait, what just happened? Did you say yeah. old old grandmas make the pasta or get the plastic surgery? I don't remember at this point. There's all all old people, plastic surgeons, pasta makers. I don't know. It's Thursday. On Thursday, we do a little thing called Walk Through Thursday. Can you please just roll the intro? Welcome back. Hope you're having fun. Cause Walk Through Wednesday just begun. What's going on, guys? It is Walk Through Thursday, the best day of the week. Holy crap what are you dizzy what are you dizzy no i was just thinking about how excited to walk through thursday is <laughs> gee oh no it's walk through thursday so today we open up the bible once the bible is open we pick a verse uh we love talking about how the bible is one word um you know living word and you just have to get the overarching themes funny enough check out our last week's podcast on walk through thursday and we talked about a verse saying sort of that you need everything the what makes it perfect is all of it right and with that being said each verse is also important there's like two things that can be true at once you know like right jesus can be god and god can be god but jesus isn't the father you know it's like the trinity but so today we just pick a verse we talk about it um and we find value in each and every word We, we go through it sentence by sentence line by am i interrupting you i'm i didn't print it Line have, by line. I have to give this to you. Word by word, letter by letter. And we that just was have... such a good teacher. Oh, you're a teacher. That's such a teacher thing to say. <laughs> Are we interrupting you, <laughs> Mr. Cartier? Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. We were like, can I go to the bathroom? I don't know. Can you? Right. Those fun ones. <laughs> 
Let's get into it. The book we're reading at today is Luke 1. All right. So uh, Luke 1, not to be confused with the Gospel of Luke, is a great book. It is the Gospel of Luke. Isn't it? No, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are the yeah. Gospels. And okay. then there's Luke 1 and 2, which are... I never heard this before. ...in the New Testament. Luke is in the New Testament. What? <laughs> what are you talking about? It's the bomb. No, you... it's all the buffalo chicken dip I right, ate Spencer, before we started podcasting. What are you saying? Luke was, 1 and 2? What first... is that? I think you're thinking of Timothy or something. <sighs> it's Luke. It's just the story of the oh, guy. 146. You know what I'm thinking of? I'm thinking of... um. <laughs> Of John, one Timothy. No, John. Look, look up John, John one and John two. Oh yeah, yeah. There's, there's a definitely problems with John. All right, here. Not problems with John. It's there's like two Confused, there's, there's different confused. kinds of books. Like I think the second one might have been like letters or something, but like the Gospels, right? There's John, yeah. and then there's John no, there one is. and two. I messed up or something like that. But I'm, also, I'm fallible. What I was talking about was, I keep saying one Timothy, but remember the person was like, it's. The fir- or t- or first Timothy. First Timothy. Who cares? Okay. Also, I, I read it wrong. Maybe you wrote it wrong because it looked like Luke 1. It sounds and then, like blaming. And then, yeah. And your U and K is made with one letter. <laughs> UK. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this United up. United Kingdom. I'm going I'm to put this up here and I want people to. Am I crazy? I don't care. I'm a doctor. Like, <laughs> I'm an anesthesiologist. Here. It's Luke <laughs> Thank 1. Thank you. All right. We're in Luke 1. 46 to 49. 46 to 49. There's only one book of Luke in the Bible. Of course, I know There's that. only one Luke in our I, life. I, I read the Bible. I swear. On it. I swear on it. I'll, I swear on. I'll swear on the Bible that I read the entire thing. Yeah. Uh, all right. Mary song. Mariah. Mary. Ah, man, we're doing good. Okay. We read a lot of the songs. Who's who's that song? Hannah. Song of Solomon. Deborah. Deborah. Deborah song. Yeah. That was um, it. We might have read this before, but it's the Immaculate Conception. So I wanted to read something about Mary. I think it's fascinating that we're reading Luke 146 to 49. Yeah, this is walk through Thursday, one verse. Um, sometimes we do multiple verses. Yeah, yeah. The shortness of these verses, like you can't read it without 46 to 40. Like you mm-hmm. have to have all three. It's, right. All right, let's just read it. And Mary said, my soul glorifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. Who is she? Who's Mary? No. <laughs> Spencer. She is his. She is the humble servant that she's talking about. My soul glorifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my savior, for he has been mercy. He has. No, don't do that. There's germs on it. He has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. Yes. What does you get it? mean? Help me. <laughs> Spencer. Help me. Give me the phone. We're, we're sharing a phone. I don't know why. Share you, a phone. You ha- you ha- <laughs> 1-800-SHARE-PHONE.COM. Vodafone. Um, Obama phone. Okay. So it's the... Um, it's the... Immaculate uh, Conception. Immaculate Conception. Sweet. Okay. This this is uh, probably referring to the Annunciation where the angel said to her what was going to happen in advance. She wasn't surprised. But it doesn't matter. It's still Mary and it's still... Um, it's important and it's in the first chapter of Luke yeah. and um, Mary's song. You're right. We read a few of the different songs or even Psalms or songs. My, okay. So when she, the person, the speaker is Mary. So my soul glorifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my savior for he has. So now, now she's talking about herself for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. So when she says he, she's referring to God. And when she refers to this humble servant and or the 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 humble state of his servant she's referring to herself and that's a it's a it's that this is a thank you right yeah this is a thank you she's saying thank you for this this wonderful glorious can't be even fully um understood of 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 his power god uh didn't strong arm her didn't say remember we said before like he didn't say this is what you're doing he, yeah. he didn't and um the humble state of his servant i i always love when we find the merciful god in um in the bible because i find you know the, the fire and brimstone of course is strong and and um shows strength and all winning the wars and you know but the being merciful be, being so powerful and then being merciful yeah I love so um 
he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. Now, it's Mary's song. This is the very beginning. I'm guessing the rest of the song, she's going to explain how he did that. Yeah. But we just have that top piece. Um, but it also has the <clears throat> the little confusing part where she talks about her soul and her spirit. That's always a confusion. I don't know what it would look like in a different version of the Bible. This is New International. Would they use the same word twice or not? But mm. Mm. we are using an IV. So we'll just talk about an IV. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Oh, you want me to talk? Oh, well, I just really laid the groundwork. Oh, um, oh, wait. The F? It's a, it's a um, screenshot. Oh, it is? Yeah. But you, I can, you can go to oh, Bible. For, wait, were we supposed to read 49 as well? Yeah, you didn't? No. Wait. Oh my gosh, do we have to restart? No. I have biscuits to bake. <laughs> I didn't finish. <laughs> I didn't even finish reading all of 48, actually. Are you seeing Which is so cool because it means that we have like extra and maybe it makes more sense to me now. It, my soul glorifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed for the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. Okay. That's, How nice is that? Yeah. And it's more of a, you could just say that as a prayer. It's just like, yeah. it does have a finish to it. So yeah, I didn't see it either when I, I actually held the phone. So, um, and it, it, obviously it's true because here we are in 2022 and we are celebrating Mary today on December 8th. And in in that account, she is saying, because of what God has done for me, for the world, through Jesus, people will always um, remember me for that. Yeah. And it's, it's it, well, one, I mean, yes, yeah, definitely just like uh, talking up towards like, obviously uh, rejoices in God, my savior, for he's been mindful. The amount of compliments, you know, it's like, um. Uh, like glorify the Lord, mindful, the mighty one has done great things. Right. Holy is his name. And I'm, I just keep coming back on like the holy state of his servant. He has been mindful of the holy state of his servant. And holy? I think, or sorry. Hum, the humble I might state. as well just take the whole podcast with the walrus sitting in your chair completely. And you're out. I just, I had a lot of buffalo chicken dip. It's a little late. He has been mindful of the humble... It's, it's really late. In England, it's actually 8, 9, 10, 11. It's midnight. Oh, no. We can't say that because then they'll know when we filmed this. It's too late now. The cat's out of the bag. Uh, all right. <laughs> They're five hours ahead, so it's already midnight. It's almost, almost being no, Friday. So, so what I'm looking at is the humble state of his servant. And I, like, I find it interesting. I'm glad that I found out. I didn't read the entire thing. It's, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. The mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. I think there is a nice thing about... The acknowledgement, like, because at first it just sounded like you're calling yourself humble, but she's sort of acknowledging that he was uh, was mindful of the, the humble state of his ser- of his servant, and then why? From now on, um, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. There's that certain like he was mindful of my humbleness because now because I'm going to be put onto a pedestal, right? And I put everything before him. Right. Like, and that's where like interesting um, for the mighty one who's done great things to me. Holy is his name. Like it's sort of, it's definitely sort of this acknowledgement of I know what's being asked upon me and I'm happy. You're mindful of the fact that not, I don't really want it because that sounds like she doesn't want to do it, but I'm happy that you're mindful of the fact that I never wanted a pedestal, right? Like I just wanted to glorify you. Right. And so in your mindfulness, you knew that and right. that's why you chose me and it's like then right. it goes on to say because for generations for or, yeah generations will call me blessed um but so yeah I, I find that the most interesting part of it is like yeah it, it's this idea of like when you are so spiritual and and you you put god first on everything it's like you are it's like if you're asked to do something higher there there is this like yeah, mindfulness of God that like he knows that like right you knew that I would never want the glory for myself right and I'm happy that, that you knew that like because you know it's different to be like called and it's like you will you will rule and stuff and it's like she was happy that he was mindful that I have lived my entire life in humbleness and just right and so it's just, it's obviously just talking and it's kind of in in all these other words of you know 
for the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. It all goes to the, at first I was confused about like this humbleness that he okay. was mindful of, but right. it's, it's, yeah, I think that's like the best, my best takeaway from it is just that idea that she wanted to just be humbly a servant of God. She called herself a servant. Right. Let it be to me according to your word. Yeah. Which is a different Bible verse where that's what she answers the angel. I'll, I'll, if you say so, I'll do yeah. it. Yeah. It's like, I always want to yeah, I'll be a humble servant. And so now she's going to be called to, or generations will call her blessed. So it's just sort of like a thank you for being mind, because that's right. the other thing. It's not like you knew my humbleness and it's, you were mindful of it. And mindful right. of it is like, you're mindful of my, like of how humble your servant is. Right. And so it's like, he's sort of like, in a way, it's like, I know, like, yeah. I, 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 I know you aren't doing this for yourself. Yeah. He, 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 he tried so, so gingerly with her, you know, um, um, imminent d- domain. That's when they can just take our house if they want to yeah. put a highway through it. You know, God could be like, you're, well, this is, yeah, you're the one that's doing it. You know, it, 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 he was, um, um, and I see, well, that it, time is up, but I just wanted to say that it's another example, which we had, uh, I don't know when I lost track of everything. Maybe it was last week. We talked yeah, about asbestos in here. We talked about we talked about the heroes of the Bible, yeah, and how they had there's there's stories about them that that survived to be told in in the same hero Bible that they had flaws, and that lets us not, you know, um, adore them yeah. as gods. And same thing I find with this, where once again, because you know, in the, the in ancient like um, Greek and um, What's the other one? The God, Roman, God, Roman you know, they're, they are heroes across the board. These, you know, um, but now we have Mary, who obviously most important woman in the Bible. And she's reminding, or we're being reminded through her words in this Luke, my beginnings. Yes, I did it because he, you know what I'm saying? I yeah. wanted to honor him, but it was always about him. It was about him. Yeah. It doesn't let any of the single people, the single humans, like, overshadow the, the the main story yeah 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 it's it, it's fascinating right like you see in the bible and we gotta finish up soon but you see in the bible like almost like if you read it mary is and actually you'll have christians fight over this of the importance and it's like right while in the bible she doesn't show up that often no like it, an actual text like um except for you know a handful of times but yet some people revere her as like the, the second greatest person. But it's like, I think it's it's sort of, sort of, it's both, right? Like, I think that's the beauty of Mary and why she was chosen. It's that humbleness. Right. It's, she is one of the biggest characters, like both chosen by God. Like we talk about David was chosen to be right. king and the stories and the grandeur yeah. and, and all this. And we can read pages and pages and callbacks and with mary you don't have that so it's easy to not think about how important she is right but that goes to what this verse is saying it's like you you know my humble nature towards you right and i and i thank you for that because i'm not a david like, and right. it's like and i don't want to be i, I right. just want to be a servant of you and i'm going to be blessed for, or i'm going to be seen as blessed for generations and so it's like this idea that why he chose her is because of exactly how we see her now. It's like right. her importance to the story, right. how blessed she was, but her full devotion to God, and right. and that was she was a servant of God, right. And that's 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 that. That's, that. that's our podcast, guys. Um, come back next tomorrow. <laughs> come back, come back next day from now. Um, I'm going not, to not check the vents for black mold <laughs> because we've been we've been off a little bit today. You more than me. I don't know. Mm-hmm. That that plastic surgery story really went on. <laughs> Did it? No, it's fine. We like it. Now I know what age to get plastic surgery on. Mm. What age to get it from. Yeah. Okay. I was to say, what is happening? Uh, I'm glad that you've Wait, finished the way you started. Bomb. I said that a million times. Peace. Mm. <laughs>